The 7 Stoltor Terror Terror Raid event is coming to Scarlet and Violet later this week. In today's video, we're going to cover all of the details, what makes Torterra such a difficult opponent, and some of the best solo builds that you can prepare in-game to help take this down when the event goes live. 7 Stoltor Terror's first time out in Scarlet and Violet will be running from the 15th until the 17th of November. It will, of course, come back for a second time out the following weekend from the 22nd until the 24th, and that weekend it will be paired up with five star terror raids for blissey so terror are going to be a very strong opponent going into the next seven star terror raid it's got very good base stats in its hp its attack and its defense it's going to be hard to take down if you're using primarily physical type attack moves whereas if we target that weaker special defense stat we're going to have a much easier time it's not the highest and something that we can definitely exploit in this raid of course it is going to have that ground terror typing so we'll get a two times boost any ground type attack so trying to have an immunity or a resistance to those ground type attacks is definitely going to help you in this raid it is probably going to have its hidden ability like all previous seven star terror raid pokemon and this time it is shell armor the hidden ability on torterra that prevents any critical hits from landing during the raid battle it does get good setup options as well it gets things like curse it gets sword stance and it gets shell smash which is something that we could maybe see on this shell smash boosts the attack special attack and speed by two stages when using it, it does have the drawback of lowering the defense and special defense on the torterra by one stage of course does like we've already mentioned get access to sword stance that'll boost the attack by two stages and also curse as well that could play off it's already good stats in its attack its defense and its speed that it doesn't really worry about now for its coverage moves it does get great ground type attacking options earthquakes probably the one that we're likely to see it does get physical grass type attacks its strongest one is going to be that wood hammer and it also gets good coverage with rock type attacks so if you are likely to bring an ice type to this raid you're going to have to watch out for things like smackdown this move here that will attack you and will knock your flying or levitating pokemon out of the air and make you grounded so you're going to be able to be hit by those ground type attacks going forward in the raid course they'll be doing super effective damage as well smackdown's not the only one you need to keep an eye out for but also things like stone edge that have that high critical hit chance as well other options that we could potentially see are things like leaf storm it gets giga drain it does get dog type coverage with crunch also has good ways to boost its defense even further through things like withdraw and also gets access to iron defense and if it does go down the road of boosting those defense stats it does get some attacking options that really play off that high defensive stat things like body press and heavy slam are two options that it does have access to that could definitely make life difficult again for ice type pokemon coming to this raid and maybe even some of those weaker defensive grass types that we're thinking about bringing just get dragon coverage and outrage so something just to consider and of course zen headbutt is psychic coverage that it gets but that is about it in regards to the coverage that you're going to see from torterra so it really makes life a lot easier for any sort of grass types that we're bringing into this raid because they are going to have a resistance to the grass type attacks to the ground type attacks and there's no worry about bug or poison type attacks that could be coming out from the Torterra because it doesn't get access to them. So the builds that we're featuring in today's video, the first one we're going to start off with is Appleton, Grass and Dragon type. Terra typing is Grass, the Shell Bell is the held item, so we have a line of recovery through the raid. And of course, like always, every Pokemon that we feature is going to be level 100 and they all have their IVs hyper trained, so they're all set to 31. Move set for Appleton is going to be Sunny Day, Growth. Iron Defense and Apple Acid and the EV spread is going to be 252 EVs in Special Attack and 252 EVs in Defense with the remainder in HP and a modest nature. The ability doesn't really matter too much into this raid but the basic idea is going to be getting your Sunny Day set up turn 1, Iron Defense turn 2, Growth three times that'll put you to plus six and then Apple Acid your way. Every time you use Apple Acid, the one of the beauties about this is it lowers the special defense on the target Pokemon. So that'll work even through the shield. So you're powering up your moves uh, every time that you use that one and you're recovering health as well with that Shell Bell. You have the resistance to the ground type attacks from the Torterra. It doesn't really have a stab attack. It doesn't have bug. It doesn't have poison that can really threaten you or an ice type attack. So you should have an easy time with this one. Pretty reliable idea of going into this raid for this one to be able to do good work against the Torterra. 
Next up, another one that has been successful in previous seven star terror raid events, and that is Lorantis. Terror typing is going to be grass on this one. It has that resistance to ground type attacks as well. Going to be hitting the Torterra for super effective damage, of course, with that ground terror typing that it does have. Held item is going to be the Shell Bell, level 100 and hyper trained with the moveset of Sunny Day, Super Power, Solar Beam and Leaf Storm. The basic idea is this taking advantage of that ability contrary. The most important thing on this build, make sure it has that ability. That will make sure that any stat drops are actually stat boosts and vice versa. So things like Leaf Storm that we've got here that would normally drop your special attack by two stages, it'll actually give you a plus two in special attack. So after three of them, you'll be a plus six. Same can be said about superpower as well. In this raid, I think in particular, the Torterra is going to be using strong physical attacks. So boosting your defense by one stage with one superpower. While you get closer to being able to terrestrialize, it's going to be a really unique thing. Sunny Day is going to be there to help set up that solar beam, which is going to be a big, powerful attack. One hit attack in the sun to deal with the Torterra. The EV spread is going to be pretty straightforward. 252 EVs in HP and in special attack with the remainder put into defense and a modest nature, but that is the Laurentis. Next up, we've got Blossom. Now you could choose Venusaur here, you could choose Victory Bell, Vile Plume, but I do like Blossom because it is a pure grass type. Now the problem with Venusaur, Victory Bell and Vile Plume is yes, they might have slightly higher base stats than the Blossom, but they take neutral damage from those earthquakes because of that part poison typing. So the early parts of the raid could be more difficult, whereas Blossom doesn't have that problem. It is going to resist those ground type attacks. The held item here is going to be the Expert Belt. We've got level 100 and hyper trained with the moveset of Sunny Day, Growth, Acid Spray and Giga Drain. It's a really nice set, I think, for the Blossom. You're going to start with the Sunny Day, then you're going to spam your Acid Sprays, then you're going to get Growth. It's going to give you a plus two to your special attack and attack when the sun's on the field. And then you're going to use Giga Drain as your main attacking option. It's going to recover damage as well. And the Acid Spray works through the shield, drops the special defense by two stages every time you use it on the Torterra. It's pretty weak on its special defensive side anyway. So it's going to be a very strong option into it. The EV spread is going to be 252 EVs in HP and in special attack with a modest nature. The remainder EVs put in defense. And even if this doesn't work out quite as well, you could change the EV spread from HP investment to all in that defense stat just to bulk it out a little bit more. Ability here is chlorophyll. So when the sun's up as well, you're going to be outspeeding whatever else is on the field. We've got to throw in a token ice type for this ground terror type Torterra. And I think Glaceon is one of the best ones that we've got that's got that nice combination of boosting its stats, lowering the opposing Pokemon stats and being able to kind of expedite the damage that you want on the field. Ice Terra type, of course, held item is going to be the Shell Bell. Again, it needs that line of recovery through the raid. And the moveset is going to be Chilling Water. That could be changed for Snowscape if you feel like it. But I feel like you want a way to chase down your Terrestrialization. You also want a way to weaken the Torterra as well because we haven't got a way to boost our defensive stat on the Glaceon if you don't have that Snowscape. Then we've got Calm Mind going to boost our Special Attack, Special Defense, uh, Fake Tears. This won't work through the Shield, but if the Shield goes up later in the raid like we're expecting it to, then this is going to be a good option to kind of increase the damage output early on in the raid, dropping the special defense by two stages every time you use it. Just be careful if the shield goes up, this won't work, so don't waste turns using it when that shield's up. And then freeze dry is going to be your main attacking option when you are all set up in the raid. EV spread is going to be 252 EVs in HP and special attack. Again, you could take those out of HP, put them into that defense stat with a modest nature though. And a, the ability doesn't really play too much in this raid. If you do go Snowscape, I would go Snowcloak. It gives you a bit more of an advantage where you can dodge attacks with that accuracy evasion that it gives you. And finally, we've got a bit of a unique pick here and one that I am looking forward to testing. I think it could do a good job because it's got the tools that you really want going into a seven star terror raid. It might not seem like it on paper, but this Haunter could do a very good job against the Torterra. Grass Terra typing on there. We've got the held item of the Eviolite. That's going to give us a 50% boost to our defense stats, which is quite important. Second line evolution. Of course, we're not at Gengar yet. Uh, level 100 and hyper trained, of course. And the moveset is going to be Protect, Acid Spray, Nasty Plot, and Giga Drain. And the EV spread is going to be 252 EVs in HP and in defense 
with a modest nature, the remaining EVs put into that special attack stat. The ability here is the big one, the selling point for the Haunter, and that's going to be Levitate. It is going to give you complete immunity to any ground type attacks, but that's the reason why we've got the Protect on here. You might be thinking, why Protect? Well, there will be a turn in the raid where it nullifies stats and abilities on our side of the field, and that's the turn that we're going to have to use the Protect because our Levitate will not be in effect that next turn. Once that's passed, we're going to be fine afterwards. So the basic idea is going to be using Acid Spray or the special defense on that Torterra by two times every time we use it. Nasty Plot's going to boost our special attack. And then Giga Drain is a big damaging attack that we can utilize. Uh, we're going to do big damage, especially after we've terrestrialized. And I think a really good set, honestly. I think we because of the poison type and resist the grass type moves, we've got the Levitate. It's going to resist the ground type attacks. It might not seem like the strongest of Pokemon, but I do think Haunter could do a good job in this raid, and I really hope that it does. Top picks, though, are going to be the Appleton. Of course, this is going to be a very obvious one for a lot of you. You've probably already got it built in your game. Bonus if you have. The Lorantis, of course, is another one. Blossom, I would say, is a very good option. Uh, the Glaceon is on the borderline, and of course, we can't tell until the raid goes live, but the Haunter feels like it could be a good option going into this raid. If you found today's video useful, please consider dropping a like, and make sure you do hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our Pokemon content here on the channel. Of course, we do drop a best solo build as soon as the raid has gone live, and we've done that testing process, so it gives you the easiest time going up against Solterra if you are struggling with it course as well these are just some of my ideas on what i think will work going into the raid we don't know for sure until the raid goes live and we know what moves it's got what interactions it does throughout the event if you've got your own builds though as well do drop them down in the comment section below i'd love to hear what you're thinking will do well into the torterra when it goes live and of course this is the last starter pokemon that we've got for the seven star terror raid events unless we see the paldea starters but that might not happen hopefully it does but if not this might be the end of the starter raids and we're going to get some more exciting ones coming up in future, which is very exciting. But thank you so much for tuning in, friends. We'll leave it there. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you all in another video very soon. So until then, take care and bye-bye.